I'm going to crystal ball into 2013. I, I guess my comments, I like to just say, I'm going to break it down again into the two categories. One is the PNC brokers, and the other, of course, are the insurers and the other connected industries. Um, for 2013, I don't see any reason why we would have less uh, activity. We get back to my first comment, which is, is the demographic uh, situation of the baby boomers. They will continue to divest themselves and, and move into retirement mode. The larger brokers, of course, will continue to acquire smaller brokers because there's reasons for them to um, look at the economies of scale, operate you know, more efficiently, they have better technology, and basically um, they have more markets. So they will not stop acquiring because it, there's a lot of bottom line um, you know, profitability in moving forward and continuing to acquire smaller brokers that fit their, their niche, right? Mm-hmm. Then we also have the next generation, and it's interesting because I do get um, requests repeatedly now from what I call the next generation, not the baby boomers and not the family, the children and the families, but um, the, they want to expand, and, and quite often it's the producers who will be coming forward contacting me because they would like to become um, owners in some capacity. Sometimes they are involved um, with a company where they'd like to see you know, minority shareholdings, and they don't know how to go about that in approaching their own employer. Or ultimately, they would just like to outright buy an insurance brokerage and become independent owners rather than employees. So, you know, I I see that the brokerages who are not willing to enhance their, you know, their customer services or spend the money on technology, or even, I think, get more involved with understanding the younger generation and their working habits and expectations, will be willing to continue to sell, and I just see a 2013 still continuing the same path and heated up like 2012 was for the PNC brokers. Okay. Um, you know, with more succession planning, which is taking place, I'm very pleased to see that. Um, you know, I talked to somebody recently who had been involved in his in their own succession planning for several years now, and, and the results were that they increased their profits, they were able to reduce their expenses, and, you know, ultimately this will and does command a higher selling price because basically when you do sell a brokerage, it's based on the multiples of EBITDA. And the higher the EBITDA, of course, the higher the selling price. So from that perspective, um, I'm, I'm seeing more and more um, good planning coming into, the, into place. Mm-hmm. So that's my comments on the, the brokerage side. Now, on insurers, I see a little different scenario. In 2013, of course, if you look back, there weren't major acquisitions in Canada. Um, However, you have to look at the divestiture of subsidiaries. And this is where I made a comment, I think, a year ago. Um, We have to look at the foreign-owned insurers uh, or the probability of divesting because there's um, a structure there that requires the board of directors to be accountable and responsible to its shareholders. So if you've got a foreign-owned subsidiary, they are going to, um, you know, I'm talking about a Canadian insurer, for example. Yeah. They would then strategically start their planning process for the, um, for the shareholders. And, you know, the strategic plans would involve looking at how do we improve the capital surplus, for example. How do we increase our liquidity? How do we reduce earnings from volatility? Some of the, um, the uh, businesses that were sold in the insurance sector Um, were more volatile. So the decision was made to sell those subsidiaries. And then, you know, the last point of their strategic plans is probably to reduce the risk. So ultimately, what's the result of all this? Well, I guess they're going to strengthen their financial position. And then that allows them to focus on the areas of really their greatest strength, or otherwise, put another way, their core business. So yes, I foresee this happening in 2013. In the, you know, in the insurer, just an, another comment I can make on the insurer results. The property and casualty profits have not been great um, in, the, you know, in the previous years. They've certainly had you know, um, underwriting losses, uh, results that were not satisfactory. They've had investment income that, as a result, as you know, how the investment world has worked, has not been up to the, the standard or the expectations. Mm-hmm. However... There was a very positive picture that's come out of this in 2012, um, and the third quarter results both in the United States and Canada have increased. 
and some I just did some quick review and I, I won't quote any stats off anybody, but basically the third quarter results for the industry in the P and C sector has doubled in the United States and in Canada was up twenty five percent. So that's that's a very large significant increase from two thousand eleven into two thousand and twelve. What do I see for um, that improvement? Well, I certainly do not see um, insurance companies cutting commissions to brokers because the insurance companies still need the brokers to be their marketing arms. So um, my conclusion is that um, we will see, you know, insurance companies stronger this year. And I'm quite pleased to hopefully project correctly that the brokers are not going to be impacted by that and will be able to work much closer and better with their um, you know, with their insurer partners.